YouTube, what's up? Curtis Johnson here, Capital Preservation Services. How you guys doing? It's been a long time since I made a video. And hope you guys still out there putting in that work. Doing what you gotta do. Well, my first video back, I want to say or let you know that we don't do preservation work anymore um, not to say that we won't do any later but right now we're not doing it and if we do decide to go back it won't be for all the clients we were working with before and here's the reasons when we got into property preservation we were the only company, maybe a few more, in this area. So, with that said, we not only saved our clients' butts for this area. I can't say saved because I don't know, you know, I don't know what was going on. I don't know if, um, you know, I don't know the contracts. I don't know. I don't know, but we made them some money. And we made money too. And I'm not complaining about the money. But even though this is preservation work, it's also business. So it's always about the money. Um, but the thing is, the thing is we had plenty of work. I was able to grow my business. Like I always said, I started out in the minivan and with a push lawnmower. You know, now I have everything that I need to perform, inventory, still have inventory. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. Then, as time went on, maybe after two years or so, two, three years, maybe longer, they recruited other people and not only did they recruit other people they were recruiting um people that wanted to be regionals or regional companies now if you guys are in the business you know that regionals have lower pricing for their contractors and a lot of regionals allow their contractors to work without paperwork, insurance, things of that nature. And they also allow their contractors to do shady work, things that aren't good. Well, I don't do that. I always do the work professional, get it done the right way so it doesn't have to be done again or you know I'm not just going to throw up a handrail with two pieces of wood you know I'm going to do it right I'm going to do it the way it needs to be done with that said there's no there's no cheap bidding you know I bid accordingly to what it needs to be done accordingly to pay my guys that's out in the heat and the sweat and the snow and the rain and I like to pay my bills, taxes, insurance, gas, which is going to go up another subject, um, things of that nature. So they brought in all these other people with little bids and they were getting the jobs and basically they liked them better because of the pricing, which is cool. But, you know. They have to accept the fact of what they were going to receive for that price. So with that said, these guys moved in. They started spreading work out. And we probably went from six to 700 grass cuts a month to... First it was, first it was 300. And then we, it was down to maybe 100 grass cuts a month. Now, you, some may say, oh, that's still good. That's still a lot of money, but... You have to think, we're in New Jersey, 
and we covered from Camden County, New Jersey, all the way up the west side of New Jersey to and over to Morris County. So we're talking about the whole length, a whole from the bottom county, for the bottommost point of Camden County up to Morris County. We're talking about a a, a, a good three hour run. And of course, I would send trucks north, send trucks south, keep tracks, you know, I'll keep them in the area. But once the inventory got low, I would have two grass cuts in Camden County, one grass cut in Morris County, one you know, three grass cuts in Warren County. And mind you, we're talking, again, about a good three-hour run. And to have a guy go out, drive an hour cut two or three lawns, drive another hour. We're talking, you know, and this is with equipment. So you got a truck that's like 15 gallons, gallons to the mile. Then you got lawnmowers and equipment on the back of the truck. You know, you're looking at literally like five to seven gallons to the mile. So you fill the truck up, you go to do two grass cuts, just enough to make the gas money back you know even with the upsells and stuff like that it just wasn't worth it there's only so much upselling you could do without robbing people and i'm not into robbing people i like to be fair i like to be professional and i like to not have to look over my back or worry about if i'm gonna get caught or ordered or something like that so it became unfeasible for us so, you know, at that point, we started cutting out area. They don't like that. They don't like when you turn down work. So that cut our inventory or workflow even more with the bigger companies. You know, I'm not going to say any names. So, you know, and then it just got lower and lower. Then it got to the point to where... We would go to these properties, put bid approvals in, go do the bid approval, and it's already done. Somebody already went out to do it. Now, in a lot of cases, a lot of contractors would just take pictures and get paid for it. I'm not going to do that. Again, I don't want nobody questioning me about nothing. I just want you to write a check and give me my money. So, you know, this... Something I mean, it, it ranged from a four hundred dollar job to up to a thirty five hundred dollar job we were going to do, and we get there and it's already done. You know, we could literally get the email or work order that morning, go out to that property, and the work would be done already. So you know, it it's it kind of frustrating. So you know, we started just minimizing our distance and. You know, it wasn't like, so they cut back even more. So, you know, whatever. Um, there's one company that allowed us to stay in our county. And we don't have to go out that side of that county. And, you know, it's feasible. You know, I don't have to worry about nobody coming over there and doing my work. You know, it's a good company. So, those are the main reasons why we stopped doing property preservation work. Currently, we're still a landscape and construction company. We are registered, insured. We do have a contractor's license. We do, um, so, you know, now we do, you know, land, landscaping. We're doing pavers, retaining walls, um, sidewalks painting you know still you know a lot of stuff that we would done in preservation or reo work rather um but it's different you know it's different it's not taking the time and you know i can i can make my contract the way i want i don't have to go on somebody's page price everything out according to their standards 
I put it to my standards. And it's either I give or, you know, you take it or you leave it. You know, I, I it may fluctuate a dollar, a few dollars here and there, but for the most part, the price is set. You know, I figured out what my hourly rate should be, my daily rate should be, you know, and that's what it is. There's no way around it. I have to get paid. My guys have to get paid. My business have to get paid. No way around that. You know, and at this point, you know, you can, I can get rid of the tire kickers. I can get rid of people calling me saying, oh, I need this done. Um, can you come give me an estimate? You know, even though it's not that far, you know, I can tell them, listen, it's X amount of dollars a day. It's going to cost you to do it. And it's, and depending on the job, it's going to take. X amount of days, minimum. So that gives them a roundabout price right there. And I don't have to waste my time. I don't have to waste their time. They can go on to the next person to see you, you know, what they charge. Um, and, you know, and that's about it. You know, it's point blank period. You know, I don't have many clients right now. I had more. I had to let quite a few go for personal reasons, but you know, it's business. Um, and another thing I've done, I, you know, I, I work a part-time job now. I'm a building maintenance manager. I take care of the business, uh, the building. I change light bulbs. I do work here and there. And when it comes to a big job, I subcontract it out to someone else. Um, and primarily I do a lot of subcontracting. A friend of mine has a cleaning business. I find cleaning jobs. I give it to him, I get a couple dollars, you know, it's all about cash flow. So, you know, that's just another idea um, of what you guys can do to generate money. It don't always have to be you, you know. Um, and if you're wondering how I found these clients, um, you know, I, I'll make another video about it. If you, like, if you want to, hit me up, but, you know. Not hit me up, but, you know, leave a comment, say, yeah, I'm wondering how to do it. Um, but, you know, it's not hard. It just takes time and dedication to, to grow your business. Um, I could be a lot bigger than I am right now, but I just don't have the time. Um, right now, I have a few guys that, you know, very few guys that I call when I need help um, because I know they'll work. You know, they do good work, they do a good job, and, you know, it is what it is. Um, and right now I have one person that I'm actually training to be on my landscaping team. Um, because, you know, you just can't go out and weed whack grass to the dirt. There's, there's, there's a skill set to it, you know. I actually... You know, I actually just went out to try to get some new clients. I have these flyers made up and little postcard flyers. And I think I handed out maybe 50 of them in the area. I seen there was a need. You know, I, I ride past through this area all the time. And, you know, I noticed a change in a few properties. You know, grass was getting this, you know, a couple yards are always immaculate. Then all of a sudden I ride past and this grass is high. Okay, let me put a flyer in the mailbox. You know. Why I just do two houses, I'll do the whole area. Those two houses I was looking at, they called me. I got those two clients. Um, but anyway, uh, that's a different video. Um, so, yeah, I, I basically haven't been marketing, and it's just been word of mouth and, um, you know, just random phone calls because we are on Google. Um, I don't have my website at the time, so... Uh, once I put that back on, then the calls will start coming in more often. But I know this video is getting long and winded, so, you know, leave a comment. If you're still doing proper preservation, you know, let us know. So, yeah, I'm still out there, blah, 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 blah. If you're not, tell us why. What made you stop doing proper preservation? Um, in the next video, um probably show you 
some of the marketing things I do um, that's, that, that gets me my clients. Because I have quite a few that work. Quite a few that didn't work. And, you know, I'll put it out there. If you're looking to get out, you know, these things are helping. So, until next time, peace.